Papuans reject proposed highway to link the highlands and Morabe to Port Moresby. Trucking company Trans Wonderland cut down operations. And Team East Sibic needs more funds to make it to the PNG Games. This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Saturday's news. The proposed national highway that will link Morabe and Southern Highlands with Gulf Province and NCD was opposed by members of Papua Besana in a peaceful rally today. The rally, led by Papua separatist leader Dame Josephine Abija, concluded with Papuans refusing to have the highway built. Over 500 Papuans gathered at Jack Piddick Park in Port Mosby and raised their concerns on the negative issues the highway will bring if the government goes ahead and build one. Central Province Council of Women, I say no to that road. This proposed highway falls under the government's national road projects and is something the O'Neill Leon government wants to see eventuate before the next election. But this project has been rejected by locals, both in Gulf and Central Provinces. That road is going to bring more disaster. Yes. These proposed routes will connect Wau in the Morobe province to East Kerama on one end and Southern Highlands to Kikori and Baimuru in West Kerama on the other end. Both these highways will link to Berena in Central Province and eventually into Port Mosby. We are going to take international, go out, uh, talk to our people outside uh, and uh, tell them what is happening to us. Locals said if a highway is built, it will create land grabbing issues and more people will have access into their land. <laughs> Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. Illegal mining and alcohol-related crimes in Pogara Valley have gradually reduced due to the call-out operation. Through the efforts of the Joint Security Forces, over 200 cases were dealt with and 42 cases convicted. Following the success of the first deployment in April, more troops were deployed, including soldiers from Bravo Company in Moen Barracks. In a media statement, the Joint Security Forces stated that since the first call-out was made on April 23, there have been significant progress. Crime rates have dropped at Pogera Valley, mostly related to illegal mining activities. Barry Gold, the developer of Pogera Gold Mine, is a major corporate partner in the call-out operation due to the increase of illegal miners and rise in criminal activities in the Pogera Valley. Contingent Commander Chief Superintendent Norman Cambo confirmed that they have reduced the level of illegal miners entering the mine pit. Heavy police presence with the support of PNG Defense Force troops and logistical support from Barrick Gold, this has reduced crime. With the alcohol ban in the Pogara Valley, it has reduced all crimes associated with the consumption of alcohol. The Joint Security Forces Prosecution Unit has convicted 42 offenders from September to October this year. This includes cases of illegal minors, murder, rape and family violence, mostly associated with polygamy. All illegal minors convicted are fined 1,000 kina. So far, two illegal minors were convicted and fined. Recently, a workshop was conducted by all parties attached to the call-out operation. They identified impact projects for the community based on the five-year development plan for Liga Pogara. This will see the involvement of other government departments. However, funding has been a problem to support them, especially those attached in the call-out operation. Following a recent visit by the Director of National Security Council, Ian Jinga, the Council has made a commitment to the second phase of call-out operation, Short Stop 2014 in Pogara Valley. Bridget Komatep, National MTV News. A comprehensive fresh produce value chain workshop was held yesterday in Mount Hagen, Western Highlands Province. The workshop brought together key players of the fresh produce industry to discuss alternative ways to support the horticulture industry and improve its services. The workshop was hosted by the Fresh Produce Development Agency. 
The workshop was attended by major players of the fresh produce sector from local farmers, buyers, freighters, financial institutions and line government agencies involved in the horticulture industry. The fresh produce industry has grown rapidly as FPDA and other agencies support rural farmers in farming garden produce. But despite this initiative, many issues affect the value chain players. One cannot operate without the other. We must all work together, we must all hold our hands together so that we play this game so that we can successfully get home. The workshop outlined key factors of poor road system and transport conditions, high freight cost communication and poor market infrastructures among others which the value chain players discussed about. We have passed many circumstances and obstacles to reach this, this room. So we have, all, um, we have already um, passed through 50% and we are still struggling to reach there. There needs to be a lot of change. Uh, I've done some market, out in the market, around the supermarkets. I want to show you what I'm finding and what we need to change. It starts from uh, seed selection, harvest time, packaging, cool chain. The workshop then deliberated on initiatives and opportunities to support the growth of the industry and our current practices along the supply chain and support services can be improved to unlock the full potential of the industry. The fresh produce industry is a multi-million kina business involving many players of which direct benefit is for farmers in rural places. But if all challenges affecting the industries addressed by all stakeholders, including government, PNG will stop importing fresh produce and reap millions from exporting fresh organic fruit and vegetables to the world. Jack Power Junior National, MTV News. When we come back, Trans Wonderland scales down operations following the end of construction phase in the LNG project. Stay with us for the details. Welcome back to the news. One of PNG's successful homegrown businesses has scaled down its operations due to the completion of the PNG LNG project construction. Trans Wonderland Limited yesterday formally announced the end of a three-year partnership contract with its sister landowner companies. Despite this, TWL plans to invest more in logistics and to bring in a new private airline company. Trans Wonderland Limited came into operation in 2009, owned by 20,000 stakeholders and 28 different companies from Kutubu and Aids area in Southern Highlands. The landowner company has been successful in logistics and trucking services. They carry cargoes for the LNG project on the 800km road from Leitu to Como. During the construction phase, 10 landowner groups have joined hands with TWL, forming what they said a consortium concept. According to Managing Director Larry Andagali, this homegrown concept has allowed the 10 LO groups to contribute a truck each with a unique agreement to set the risk and revenue. A consortium group that we put together and uh, they bought 10 trucks and those 10 trucks uh, set the revenue and risks together. Yesterday TWL formally ended this agreement allowing the 10 groups to either take back their truck or sell it to interested buyers. 50% and about 40 trucks will, be, will stand down. Mr. Ndagali said the company will continue to invest in logistical services. 50% of TWL workforce has been laid off. At the same time, he said they are planning to bring in a new airline company. The company, called AAG, has been operating in Queensland, Australia. Quintana Lomp, National MTV News. The Debo Menu Elementary and Primary School in the Central Province held its 14th grade 8 graduation yesterday. Three weeks ago, the school had issues on finance and classroom space to cater for the ever-increasing number of students. However, over 40 grade 8 students graduated yesterday. Despite the many challenges, the church-run school has been one of the top primary schools in the central province. Debo Menu Elementary Primary School in the Kariko Hiri District is one of the top schools in the central province. 
the Catholic Church runs school has topped other primary schools in the central province since 2011. However, the last year has been hard on the school. Financial problems being the main factor of the school's poor start to this year, the school is still embarking on bigger development projects. The expansion of its elementary school is one of the few, as both chairman Kevin Misko explained. Because this is the main elementary that we have, Ward 16, but we also have Ward 17 that has two uh, elementary run by the company. But they, they only do elementary prep and elementary one. The school's problems at the beginning of the year came about when alleged misappropriation of school funds surfaced. The school's financial account was seized and the school had to operate on what little it had. Moreover, parish priest Father Mikhail Marisi says over the last four years, the school has seen some improvements. Father Marisi says the Catholic Church and the local community have played a huge role in developing the school. The contribution of the Catholic Church in not only Papua New Guinea, in Pacific Islands, one of the priorities is education. And uh, you can see that in this area, in the Dutch of Berina, uh, it's been doing that. Uh, I think the Catholic Church has been the agency right in the school with partnership with the government. Despite the bad start to the school's academic year, head teacher Messi Toimabuela says he is confident in his grade 8 students to be selected for high school next year. Certainly, they may be, uh, say frankly, I am um, anticipating to see some good results some great, good results at the, at the end of the year. The school witnessed its 14th graduation with over 40 students graduating. Stanley Ovet Jr., National MTV News. And that's how we wrap up our news segment tonight. But stay tuned, we've got True Guy Sports coming up next. Details after the break. Tukai Sports. BSP PNG Games 2014. 14 days to go. Support your province. Team East Sepik Province is still in financial limbo following revelations that they are facing a shortfall of 150,000 kina. This was made known by the team's general manager, Clarence Hukahu, at a fundraising dinner last night. The dinner, organized as part of the team's ongoing fundraising drive, had expected support from the ESP community, but not all the tables were occupied. General team manager, Clarence Hukahu, when presenting the preparation report on the team, said sport could be used to change the attitudes of people in the province. In ECP province, we do not have a provincial sports coordinator. We only have an advisor, and a lot of us are volunteering our time to at least get the people of ECP to understand and see what sports is and what sports can do for them. He says there is a lack of support from the local community, and he is calling for assistance from leaders of the province. A lot of people are not looking at how sports can change the behavior and the attitudes of the people of ECP. And for those of you who are here from ECP, I challenge us all to work together to find means and ways to help our youths. Older brother and journalist Thomas Hukahu was more passionate in his call for assistance, urging fellow men to look outwards and upwards. In that way, by you driving on Mangiro, goal on Arapa level, and we might have, I'm just thinking, you know, I would be happy to see a uh, Pacific in the next decade or two decades time to win a gold in the Olympics or something. Team Mississippic would be taking part in 11 codes out of 28 and field in 238 competitors for the Games. Jeremy Moggy, National MTV Sports. And on a related topic, Team Western Highlands also held a corporate golf event to raise funds for its team to the PNG Games. Six teams participated in the corporate challenge, a smaller than expected turnout but raising 17,000 kina in the process. Western Highlands Deputy Provincial Administrator for Social Service, James Papa Ull, said the province has been seeing changes as a result of the PNG Games and is hoping to use this drive to combat social issues. I think we all should be doing the same. We should give sports an emphasis so that the young people, we should look after them through sports. 
because plenty of them, you, you look at now, plenty of, plenty of the young fellows, they're just idle, doing nothing, wandering around, doing all kinds of unnecessary things. But if they can take part in sports, I'm sure that it can do a lot of things for the young people. It can, it can change them. Turning overseas now to Rugby League, Australia's halfback Cooper, Cooper Cronk has called on the young players in the squad to step up ahead of tomorrow's must-win against, against England. The Kangaroos have been hit hard by injuries, but Cooper Cronk says there are no excuses for another poor performance. A week on from the shock loss to New Zealand, it appears the mood of Kangaroos coach Tim Sheen still hasn't improved. Tomorrow, Sione Matautia and David Clammer are likely to become the latest in a string of debutantes, which has left the Roos looking vulnerable. We're in this together. No matter your experience or lack thereof, the reason you've been picked for Australia is because you can play the game of rugby league. You're a very good player at whether it's state of origin or club level, so hey, don't be afraid. Go out and showcase your skills, do what you've been picked for, and let's go out and represent Australia together. Daily Cherry Evans passed a fitness test on his injured hip and should line up at 5'8", but his half partner admits their combination is yet to gel. It's not perfect. Um, yeah, we'd love to be able to spend you know, all the time together and play a lot of football, but um, you know, the situation is that... you know. His role has been different the last few years. There wasn't a referee in sight, but there were still plenty of whistles at England training. <laughs> the tourists drawing inspiration from the fearless James Graham. He probably gets a bit, a bit too crazy on the field at some time, shouting him. But that, that's, that's the way he's played and that's the way he's always played. And I'm sure that's why, why he's going so far. It was tribal warfare in New Zealand today. as the Kiwis took on Samoa. Samoa threatened a major upset before New Zealand stole the win in the last five minutes. And you can watch the Four Nations test between New Zealand and Samoa straight after the news. The moment of truth has almost arrived for the Wanderers with their second leg of their Asian Champions League final kicking off early tomorrow morning in Saudi Arabia. In contrast to the desert heat, the reception for Western Sydney has been frosty. The team has been clashing with local officials and the media. The first look and touch of the stage the Wanderers will be playing on in their most important game of their short and impressive career. King Fahd Stadium is a showpiece in Riyadh, but the Wanderers appeared a little underwhelmed by the multi-event venue. Yeah, I suppose just another stadium really, um, nothing out of the ordinary. The final training session for the Wanderers at King Fahd Stadium wasn't without incident. They arrived late because of heavy traffic and were told that their session had been cut short. That didn't go down well and on top of that they found out the surface hasn't been mowed yet. After a heated exchange, the Wanderers got an extension. It starts from the moment we start Let's training. The but the issue adds fuel to a tension-filled final. Earlier, Tony Popovich proved he's still good on his feet, dealing with the local media on his side being lucky. If you classify winning 1-0 at home in a final, then we're lucky. So I'll leave that to your interpretation. 15 love Popper. Then it was suggested he had said Al Halal didn't respect the Wanderers. I didn't say that. Ouch, cop that. Final fear was raised. I have no fear. I have only excitement. And just in case anyone had any doubts about the Wanderers' mindset. They're not here for a holiday. They're here to win a final. Brendan Santalab desperately wants a piece of the action, but there's still a question mark surrounding his pop shoulder. This is not going to be a, a, a nice um, you know, time on the park for me. It's going to be rough and tough and, and I'm ready. Popovich has moulded a team of fighters. Win or lose, they will leave nothing on the paddock on full time. And that's it in True Guy Sports tonight. The weather details after these short messages. Stay tuned. True Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather information is proudly brought to you by Tablebirds. A quick look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in southern region, all centers relatively fine. In Momase, showers later in Medang, fine in Leh. 
In the New Guinea Islands, all centers mostly fine except Loringa to look forward to some showers. And lastly, in the Highlands region, all centers morning fog then fine weather. Well, that ends the news this Saturday. From the news team, I'm Tokana Hasavi. Thanks for your company. You take care and stay safe. Good night.